is Teo Hernandez. Ibrahimovic! There it is! On the first start of his second spell, Ibrahimovic once again... The Cultural Guys is a weekly podcast by Adriano Donardo, Jenny Delacoli, and myself, Nicholas Di Giovanni. We want to bring Cultural back to its roots in our communities and share stories from around the world about why we're passionate about the beautiful game. You can listen to us anywhere where you listen to your podcasts, including Spreaker, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Mixcloud. Give us your opinion on social media at The Cultural Guys on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The intro song is Fireworks by Jazz. Welcome back to, or welcome into a new episode of The Couch Show Guys with Adriano DiNardo and Gianni Del Colli. I'm Nicholas Di Giovanni. You know, guys. It's different this week, but because we're trying out uh, new things, um, thanks to Spreaker, our podcast hosting service, uh, we're we're all away from each other, and and I don't even see you, Johnny. We're doing this through Skype. Johnny, how's it going? I'm good, and you? No, not too bad. I, I see you, Adriano, at least. Uh, thank God, I'm the I'm the pretty one of the group, so I think it, it works well. Wow. <laughs> So we're going to have a, a, a bit different format this week. We're going to have uh, Jan uh, De Monato, Nando Musano, and uh, Dom, uh, Dom, Dominic De Fazio join us later. We're going to do about a 5-10 minute intro. Uh, they're going to join us. We're going to have a massive, massive debate. Okay? And, um, I mean, Johnny, you know these guys pretty well. Uh, it must be exciting to, to have them on. Oh, yeah. Honestly speaking, guys, just shoot them the topic, let them go at it, and uh, we'll get enough material to last us enough weeks if we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I, it. I know, I know Jan has a lot, of, a, lot, a lot to say from Milan's point of view, so it, it, should, be, it should be fun. So I, I just wanted to start off. Last week, we did our uh, predictions. Um, so how, we, do, we do a little point system as we did last year. If you get the correct team and score, it's four points. If you get the correct mm-hmm. winner, it's three points. If you if you correctly predicted a draw but the wrong score, it's two points. If you got the right score but on the wrong team, you get you know a sol um, a compensation point. So max so out of out of ten games, max points forty. Adriano, you got twenty this week. I got twenty, and Jenny, you got eighteen. But Adrian, you actually predicted uh, Roma Juve to finish two one and Parma Lecce to finish two nothing. So congrats to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they were the the ones that were a bit easier to 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 gauge there, and I mean, two good games, I guess you can say. So I'll take it. So not too wh- far off, two points, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what uh, what we normally do, obviously, yellow card, red card, and uh, MVP of the week. I want to do that before we have the guys on. And pretty interesting week in the city. Uh, everyone's talking about the injuries. We'll get into that later. Um, so let's start with our cards, actually. So as uh, as usual, let's get uh, let's get a yellow card and a red card each. Do you guys know uh, what you guys want to do? Uh, well, I know who I have for my cards and whatnot. So, so take it away, Johnny. Take it away, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Take All it away. Start righty with then. Yellow. All right. So my yellow card is going to go to Palacio for uh, Bologna. Um, it, they're a team that they're desperately trying to get back up into the top ten. They're trying to. A lot of teams are on their heels, and he had some golden opportunities to. I get uh, Bologna on the board versus Torino. Couldn't do it, so he gets my yellow. This is definitely going to be another yellow. Jan- uh, Idri, you're yellow? Yeah, so for me, I'm going to go um, for my yellow. I'm going to give it to, uh, well, Brescia, totally uh, stinking against uh, against Sampdoria. They're a team, uh, as we mentioned, yeah, big stinker. As we mentioned last week, uh, we got a question in by our good friend Joseph about if they're going to make it, are they going to stay in Serie A, are they not going to stay in Serie A? Uh, I still think they will. They're going to go over these these tough matches. Uh, Sam finally coming alive, Qualiera finally coming alive. Um, I think, you know, it's merits a small yellow card for their performance. I know they were at uh, at the, the Ferrari, so it's also, we we know firsthand it's a tough place to play. Um, so, yeah, for me, uh, Brescia this week uh, merits a bit of a yellow card. It's a late challenge, surely maybe the first yellow of the match. And... So for me, I'm going to get a little critical of uh, Valerio Vere of uh, Verona. So in their game against Genoa, he scored um, uh, a penalty, 
uh, to tie the game at 1-1, and he proceeded to take off his shirt. And I think it was just over-the-top celebration. It's still a 1-1 game. You know, you, you go to, to win games, which they eventually did, thanks to Mattia Zakani. But, um, you know, taking off your shirt at 1-1 on a, on a penalty on top of it um, is just just a bit too much for me. And uh, he now sees a flash of yellow before his eyes. Red cards. Let's, so let's do it the opposite cards? way. Let's do it the opposite okay. way this time. I'll, I'll All right, I'll so take it away. go ahead. Okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll take it away. I'm um, giving it to uh, giving it to the the city uh, slash. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't necessarily give it to the Stadio Olimpico pitch, but uh, city uh, a red for organizing um, or scheduling two games uh, be, for Lazio and Roma at home on the same match day. It's actually the first time since 1989 that 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 happened. But you saw the consequences of it. Both Zaniolo and Demiral got hurt on the pitch uh, when they p- planted their left leg, both with ACL injuries. And, um, you know, I hope the City Hat doesn't uh, schedule any more games on the same match day in, in the same stadium. We see, you know, we see it at, at Luigi Ferraris, uh, Genoa and Sampdoria alternate. We see it, uh, obviously, at the Olimpico, at the San Siro, uh, at the Bentegotti when both Verona teams are, are there. So, uh, you know, I think a bit of blame has to, to lie on the City Hat for these injuries. It's going to go to the... Pocket and get out the red. It's a red card. Adri? Yeah, so uh, I think I'm going to have to go pick uh, pick a bit of a bone with uh, with Napoli this week. Uh, I don't know if Johnny was taking this or not, but uh, for me, a uh, red card uh, has to go to Napoli. Uh, their performances as of late, we all know it's it, they've been uh, you know sinking a bit and uh, not getting any traction. And it's been scary because you, you see a team like Napoli with all the uh, stars that they have and you know all the potential that they do have going forward in the back as well. I think... Uh, you should think, you know, they're in, you know, the top half of the table. They now slipped into 11th place, losing one nothing against a tough, I'll, you know, albeit tough uh, Lazio team this weekend. But uh, just their performance, uh, no cohesiveness. Uh, I mean, it's a flip flop between me and uh, for Napoli and Milan the way they've been performing. So uh, this week, definitely uh, for me, red card goes to Napoli. This is going to be a red card, and it's not going to change the course of the game. Danny. Well, uh, Ospino was my backup red card for Napoli, but um, I'll divert it a bit. Uh, I'll go to Inter here for Lautaro Martinez, if I'm not mistaken. It was him that was grabbing the heel uh, in the penalty box in the Atalanta game. Um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he he totally knows what he's doing there. He knows where he's at. He knows the implications of it. He's fully aware of it. And the that's also not only is it like I'm not talking about the the missed foul, but it's also very dangerous. Uh, if you make a player lose balance like that, you could cause a potential injury with that. You know, you're not expecting, and all of a sudden you're impeded. You can just fall flat first on your face. Wow, well, flat, flat on your face. You know, and it's just. It, 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 luckily, nobody got hurt, but it was a missed penalty. But all in all, you don't do that. It's my red. Could be a red card. The red card is out, and it's no surprise. Absolutely, it's against the rules. So, coming up in a few minutes, our, our massive debate uh, with three guests. First time ever we've had three guests on the couch, guys. Before we get to that, MVPs of the week. Uh, Adriano, you take it away this time. So, uh, for me, I'm going to have to give it, you know, uh, we spoke about resolutions uh, last episode in the new year now in 2020. And, uh, I mean, my MVP, you know, I was hoping for, for goals, A, from Milan and for a win. So, I mean, we got both of that this weekend for all Milan fans out there that are listening. Uh, and, obviously, the big one uh, for Ibra uh, getting, you know, back on the score sheet uh, back in Serie A. So, uh, for me, you know what, 38 years young, according to me. So, uh, you know what, I hope more goals to come for this team and you know for Ibra as well so MVP for me this week uh, has to go to Ibra this is Teo Hernandez Ibrahimovic there it is on the first start of his second spell Ibrahimovic once again the difference maker Johnny um my MVP of the week has to go to Yankto for uh Yankto I think that's how it's pronounced yeah Yankto for Sam, Yankto yeah. Yeah, for, Sam yeah, from, yeah, for Sampdoria yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much Sampdoria needed to climb themselves out of the bottom three and they did with this uh, 5-1 win versus Brescia um, his first goal was a beauty from a wonderful assist from Lanetti a beautiful one touch like the ball even touched the ground and he got it off the side of his foot 
perfectly into the net. Um, but he also had two key assists to help Sam Doria get two more goals, pretty much just to get that extra space, not only to score the game winner, but he helped them uh, pour it on and add the icing to the cake. So for me, I'm going to have to give him my MVP of the week. And then uh, for me, I'm going to have to go to uh, Inter, and no question about it, their goalie, Andanovic, um, you know, just fantastic performance. Obviously, obviously that penalty save on uh, Muriel. Uh, Atalanta dominated the game, 64% possession uh, against 36 for Inter, 17 shots, 6 on target, obviously, and that match made 5 saves, um, and he's basically the reason why Inter was able to, to come away with one point, and that's a home game for Inter, uh, and, you know, I didn't watch the game, but I just saw a lot of praise on social media for Atalanta. But uh, I'm going to go go ahead and, and praise Handanovic. Luis Muriel against Sami Handanovic. It's a wonderful save by Handanovic. Inter's captain, Inter's hero. So that will do it for our short intro. Uh, we're going to take a, a short break. And on the other side of, uh, of break, we're going to have our three guests of the week here on the Couch Guys. Welcome back to the Calcio guys. That was uh, no pain, no gain by the the Kyoto connection. And uh, as promised, we have our slew of guests here on the Calcio guys. We got Nando Musano, Yan Bonato De Angelis, and Dom De Fazio. And you know, I, I'm super pumped to, to have the three of you on. You got different teams. You got the Milan fan in Yan. You got the Lazio fan in Nando, who we've had on before, and and Dom, the Juve fan. I'm good to. I'm happy to be joined by a Juve fan. And, and absolutely, and, uh, as we do, uh, and, with, uh, yeah, as Jan is shaking his head at the moment, as is enough. <laughs> one is enough, usually. <laughs> That's is it. Enough. Um, as we do with, with our with our guests, uh, I, I like to just um, you know understand why you guys are a fan of your team. I know Nando, you, you've talked about it on our show last year. Um, so we'll start with who, who, who do we want to start with, Jan or Jan or Dom? You have uh, a privilege, Dom. You may privilege. Okay. Yeah, you like privilege. a police. So, so, tell, like tell, a... tell us your story and, and why you're a U of A fan. So, uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Um, I'm a big fan of the show and uh, I'm excited. It's my first It's my first time, too. I'm not quite as experienced as uh, Nando and Yan, so I'll try to. First time listener, first time caller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I always watched a, a little bit of soccer when I was a kid. Um, but growing up, believe it or not, I actually, as a, as a child, as a little kid, I was a Milan and Juve fan. I think at the time, yeah, at the time they were just like the two biggest clubs, right? This was like around the 2000s, I want to say. And then in my early teens, my uncle got me a uh, Del Piero jersey. Uh, And then that's when my obsession took over. Um, Also at the time, there was like so many legends and it's easy to fall in love with a roster when there's so many legends. Uh, Also in sports, like I find that passion is very contagious, so when you see your uncle screaming and swearing and losing his mind every game, it's very easy to, to continue that pursuit and to, to fall in line and do the exact same thing. Uh, to this day, he actually uh, will call me all the time. You know, being an old Italian man, he has no idea how to use the Internet. And he thinks I'm like some kind of insider wizard when all I'm doing is <laughs> secret. I'm just repeating what Di Marzio was tweeting, right? <laughs> but uh, I have to give it to my uh, Dio Gusto for um, uh, for allowing me to discover my love for you, Yeah, Jan, Milan? Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit older than you guys. So obviously uh, seeing Paolo Maldini and Van Bastian and all those guys play. And it was my grandfather that... Uh, got me into the team he wasn't a Milan fan I think he was always uh, rooting for his Vicenza and uh, he just told me there's something big happening with Saki and this team so I started watching that and uh, 
fell in love ever since. And then like Dom, I, I stuck with the with one of my teams. I don't, as you know, as some of you know, I, I like the Leafs, and I stuck with that too. And the Cowboys, uh, they stink, and I stuck with them, and I'll stick with Milan for all the problems because. I mean, uh, I've, I've seen so a lot you know of, best. Yeah, but I've seen a lot of good things, so I'm not going to, you know, it's been 10 years now they've been really shit, but you got to stick with it. And uh, yeah. yeah, just seeing that Maldini and that team play was just something else. And uh, that's it. That's why I love them. And uh, Nando, uh, tell, us, uh, tell us again why you're, you're a Lazio fan. So I got a top uh, Dom story of cursing being his Juve uh, inspiration and Yan watching Cesare, not Cesare Maldini, not Paolo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's, that's six Champions League that I've seen more than you. <laughs> oh, um, it happened like in the mid nineties. Lazio were like a rising team in Serie A. They were they were good. Uh, and I just saw them randomly play once, and I really honestly fell in love with them, their colors, their jersey, and most importantly, the symbol. And uh, I really liked a young player called Alessandro Nesta, so uh, he went on to make history for our club and Jan's club. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What a player. What a player. So Would you beautiful. consider him more like of a, of a Milan player or more of a Lazio player? Uh, me? Or yeah, well, or like both of you guys, like Nesta himself. What would you consider him more of? Nesta has come out and said he's a Lazio one thousand percent. So, I mean, him. He's a Lazio player, thousand percent. Yeah, he would have I left mean, and had a for stupid uh, financial issues that we had in the early in the early two thousand. But anyway, he won. He won uh, some important stuff with Lazio. So for sure, coming from that system, he's going to feel more Lazio. But I'm pretty sure if you he achieved a lot of greatness also at Milan, and he's a bandiera for Milan from uh, from the 2000s onward. I mean, he really took over from Maldini, and uh, he was a great great player for both teams. But I, 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 yeah, I've heard him say it too. It makes total sense. He's definitely a Laziale at heart. He's a Roman boy. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Mo- Montreal Impact legend uh, Alessandro Nesta. <laughs> well, I'm kidding. It's fantastic. We'll take it. Great. He was yeah. great for the Impact. He's yeah, on one Lego. Uh, that was fun watching him play with the the impact in the ultras. You just see him like yeah. a general on the field telling the defenders where to go, and that guy took over when he played for the impact. Especially Three when you go to especially when you go to the games and you see like like French Canadians waving Italian flags at something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know he made an impact. You're doing something right. You're doing something. You know, right. yeah, exactly. So as promised, uh, I want to have a, a couple of uh, questions and discussion topics uh, with you guys. Um, Let's let's start off pretty general. Um, so who you know halfway point of the city season, who's been each of your biggest uh, surprises and disappointments? First for teams, and then and then for players. Uh, want, Don, you want to go we'll first? Start, uh, we'll start. Uh, with yeah. Or Don. Well, I I'll speak I'll speak for Juve obviously because I watch him the most. Uh, I think Cuadrado has to be the biggest surprise. Um, watching Cancelo go in the summer was like a heartbreak for a lot of Juventino. We were so excited about him. Like everybody was suicidal. I know I was pissed. Um, like he, the Cuadrado does like lose his marker a lot. He loses mark quite often, but then again, so did Cancelo. Uh, the whole point was we needed a right back who can transition the ball from defense into the attacking phase, especially that our, as we all know, our mid isn't what it's supposed to be, what it should be. So having the ball transition out of defense is extremely important. Cuadrado is amazing at that. Um, even defensively, let's be honest, he's like he 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 does what he's supposed to do. Um, for the I think I think he had a horrible game against Roma, uh, but again, like besides that game, I think he's been one of our best players uh, so far this year. Uh, biggest disappointment, it has to be Rabiot. Um, I was extremely excited for getting Rabiot. Uh, it feels like forever that we've heard rumors that he'd be coming to Juve. It must be three, four years now that they've been rumored to be buying him. Uh, so I have been following him for three, four years. I think that um, the transition of the league, learning a new language, not playing all last year, he didn't play whatsoever. Uh, that's obviously going to affect someone's form. And especially now, he's slowly starting to pick it up. But... With his salary, he should be doing 10 times better. Um, but I'm not like I'm, I gave him I gave him some leash there, but I, I think he will turn it around. 
but he's got to pick it up because at his salary and the fiasco he caused in the summer, he has to do better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, where do I start? Uh, I'm not going to only focus on Milan, but Christoph, for me, Christoph Kantek, massive flop, uh, disappointment. I'm not going to label him a flop. Strikers go up and down. Nando knows all too well all about that. He loves a guy that's gone up and down in his career, and I, I don't think he's totally fit. I don't think he's totally finished, but really bad year from him. Uh, I think overall, as bad as Milan's been, I think Napoli's year has been the biggest disappointment for any casual fan if you're just following i i, I was hoping they would win the scudetto this year because to see either inter or juve win you and me is, both man you and me five, both. <laughs> you know, just just thinking about that and uh, another revelation for me has to just be atalanta maintaining their poise the way they keep playing and how much money have they made in the january transfer window without losing a single roster player like come on like hats off to that organization so very nice city too i've uh, i've been once it's a very nice city too Nando. Oh, well, I'll speak on lots as we have. Uh, biggest disappointment has to be Dennis Favreau. Uh, I'm, no one's, well, you've heard of him because I, I talk about Lazio way too much. Uh, we spent about, like, I think 11 million euros plus bonuses on this guy who was compared to uh, Milan Skriniar of Inter. And, uh, and he's, I don't know, he's been absolutely off form like i understand he's coming i think he's coming from the danish league he came from copenhagen and uh he hasn't really adapted but in his defense when tari buys a player his first year he's always you can say obscure doesn't perform to uh, to their i guess their fullest potential so i'm gonna wait till next year pass full judgment but just based on his transfer fee i got to say dennis vavro and speaking of biggest surprise and again hear me out hear me out I would have to say Luis Alberto for Lazio. Uh, Because because his first breakout season, 2017-2018, he was playing uh, very close to Chiro up front. Uh, And he made the transition last year to Mezzala, uh, which was a little tough. You'd say at first, and he had injury problems. But towards the end of the year, he picked it up. So... But I didn't really expect him to have such an amazing start of the year. I mean, he has, what, three goals and 11 assists? That's insane. In, what, 18 mm-hmm. games? He's on pace for 22 assists. Uh, and biggest surprise package in Serie A, I have to say Lazio and Atalanta. I didn't expect uh, to be five points off or six points off Juve with a game in hand uh, mid- mid-season. I mean, this is a pleasant surprise. I mean, I don't expect it to last. Uh, but I'm going to enjoy the ride. And the biggest disappointment, definitely, by far, Napoli. Like it's, I know I'm singing to the choir here, but mm-hmm. geez, man. It's the reality. I don't get it. Yeah, no, it's, it's fair to say. It's totally fair to say. Uh, you spend so many years as the bridesmaid of City, uh, uh, and you expect a certain consistency to happen. And after coming close a couple of years ago, uh, and then just having that, you crap the bag at the end. I think it was just like that was the starting point of like, yeah, we're never going to have that. We're never going to be enough to get over that hill. And I think we just like fell backwards and f- tumbled down that hill, you know, and it's just, just the repercussions of it. And I, you mentioned it once when we we're having conversations on Facebook and stuff. I think uh, there needs to be a changing of the guard, but I don't want to take too much time to discuss this, but I do believe that there has to be some sort of change in the upper management group. I can agree to that. And um, let's have a fun uh, question now, uh, moving away from the serious side. Um, biggest diver in the city, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't. The guy, I don't understand why he does it, but he's uh, he's amazing at it. It's a Paulo Dybala. <laughs> he knows exactly when to dive, when not to dive. He he's a sneaky little fucker, and he's <laughs> he's he's so talented. Half the time, I don't even think. He has to, like, that goal against Milan, the way he did that little foot speed, like, you know that he can just go around the guy's foot that's coming towards him. Like, he's so talented. But uh, it's all the years in Italy, played for Palermo. He grew, he, he knows what it what the refs are looking for. And until yeah. they change the rules, guys are going to keep diving. That's what I say. So. Oh, exactly. They know what the refs are looking for people in Juve jerseys falling down. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what, yeah. You know what, yeah. yeah. I could definitely agree to that, but... Um, you know, I, I think sometimes it, it goes against him because he has that uh, reputation. And, I, I you know, I feel like the officials talk. And, um, you know, what was it, two years ago against, um, 
against Madrid in the Champions League, there was a play where he was clipped on the edge of the box and he went down easily and he didn't, he ended up getting a yellow for, for embellishment. But this is pre VAR days in the Champions League and you could see he was actually touched. But because he has that reputation, um, uh, the, the referee did not give him the benefit of the doubt and, and booked him instead. And, you know, that ended up hurting him because he got a second yellow. Um, uh, and it wasn't in Italy. Wrong, but, uh, it yeah, wasn't in Italy. Yeah, it it wasn't in Italy. Um, Again, against Inter, he got smacked in the nuts. And everybody <laughs> said it was embellishing. I had oh. multiple people telling me, like, oh, well, it was, like he, it was only a slight graze to his test. No, 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 no. I think I remember man. that. Uh, I think I remember I did, that. I mean, like a madman, I had my VAR pause and I replayed it and took a video on my phone, on my 65 XTV. <laughs> of course you did, my mind. Dom. And I wasn't yeah, seeing things. <laughs> Look, but listen, I, I've given enough nut shots in my life to know exactly what a nut shot looks like. Yeah. Tom's an expert. I, I, I agree that Dybala does dive a lot, but between him and Cuadrado, I think Cuadrado takes the kick. Uh, he has a he has a, a really move a move that works really well where he squares up with his back against the defender, and as soon as the defender touches him, he topples over on top of the ball. He does it at least once a game. Um, I will say though that uh, good strikers, intelligent strikers, know how to dive. Mm -hmm. So it's also yeah. up to the defenders not to make contact or to leave their leg out. And I understand that diving is an ugly part of the game, but as long as we don't find a solution to, to fix the diving problem, which I don't think will ever happen, because let's be honest, like there's diving in every single sport, intelligent and good players will always take advantage of it, like Dybala. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I agree. I want a bit of a be a bit of a hipster here and go with uh, Josip Ilicic of Atalanta. If you really, if you're, if you're, you really hate Atalanta. Yeah, okay. I just don't. I, I we'll get into that after. Like, but um, you watch this guy again. Super talented. Super. I mean, he's fantastic with the ball, and just every time this guy's slightly grazed, he'll fall and make such a meal out of it. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, and but thank God that Atalanta can't take penalty shots. I just saw a random. <laughs> uh, I saw a random uh, stat. I don't know if it's true. Don't take don't take my word for it. But they apparently they missed like fifty percent of the penalty shots. If you see, wow, before. that's actually wow. really low. I don't know. I, I found it somewhere on Twitter. One of my one of my guys that I follow. But I'll try to find it. But uh, and back to Dom's and piggyback on Dom's point, um, has anyone here read The Italian Job by Gabriele Marcotti and uh, Gianluca Vialli? It's a book that was written in the early 2000s. No. It's basically... I want uh, to. You should. I actually yeah, have a copy. I heard, it's a good, I heard it's very good. I have a copy if you guys are on board. I just got to dig it out. But uh, it basically tells you, it's comparing Italian football to uh, English football and how they perceive diving. So I, I don't want to go too much uh, too deep into it, but it times you diving as a uh, if if you can get an advantage by tricking the referee and winning the game, uh, then it's not viewed. It's not it's not really frowned upon. I, mean, I, I I vaguely remember it. It's been about ten years since I read this book, but that's one thing that stuck with me. That's how maybe Italians view diving. It's not as mm -hmm. as a way of cheating, but a way to get an advantage in a war, yeah. a battle. You know. So, yeah, we do the same thing. We we do the exact same thing when we play defense. The classic mm -hmm. Italian way is the, the the slight tug of the jersey or the pull on the shorts or putting enough contact. Let's be honest. We've complained many times when you see Chiellini do it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's just yep. like the Italian way of always finding the upper hand. Yeah, yeah Idri Gianni, quickly, uh, the biggest divers for you. Mm. Uh, I guess I'll go first. I'll go, I'll go my boy, Mertens. <laughs> he can't beat that, uh, what was it, the first game against Fiorentina? Yeah. yeah, where he just, like, there's, like, nobody's near him, and he just slams his foot on the ground in the box, and he's just, nobody's near him, though. It's just the ball that's near him, and he's toppling over, and I'm like, really? And then somehow he gets the call. <laughs> hey, they won that game, I think it was 6, no, no, it wasn't 6-3. 4-3. I don't know where I got 6 from. Anyways, but they went 4-3, and I'm like, thank God for that, but that was so bad. And for them, like, yeah, you can't, you can't really beat him anymore. I, I gotta give it to him. He's like one of the best fakers, and for you, or yeah, worse, that was, that depending on the, depending was, on how you look at it. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was pretty bad. But uh, I'm gonna go for Johnny's other boy, uh, Chiesa. Um, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, bright star, yes. Uh, I, I'm, I love him, obviously. You know, young prospect for the Italian national team, which I always like. Uh, but uh, he's too talented uh, to, you know, go down like that and stay on your feet, make a play, make an extra pass. You can. Uh, he's, you know, they got, uh, he's talented and they've got talent on that squad. So, uh, I think 
you know, if he wants to crack, you know, the Italian national team roster, I think stuff like that's going to have to be a bit canceled out of his game because I think, A, he's too talented, and B, um, you know, there's going to be that extra pass where it is needed and he can, you know, bring that. So for me, uh, Chiesa definitely uh, gets my look for, for biggest diver in the city. Yeah, but I do agree with uh, the Dybala point, uh, Ilicic as well. I think they're all, uh, all good points as well. So uh, moving on quickly, uh, obviously we spoke about it a bit before. We kind of brought up in our uh, yellow card, red cards, but um, the Serie A, and we always have something to complain about with the Serie A. It seems like every week there's there's always something, or every year there's you know something to complain about. But uh, this week, uh, two games were scheduled at the Olimpico. Uh, obviously, Nando is an expert. Uh, everything, uh, everything, you know, lots and everything at the Olimpico. So, uh, what do you what do you guys take about? Uh, you know, the, the Serie A scheduling two games uh, in the same match day uh, resulting. Well, I don't know if it resulted, but maybe could have played a factor in uh, in injuries in that uh, Roma uh, Juve game with obviously Demiral and Zaniolo going down with uh, crucial injuries. Do you guys mind if I take this one? I'll go for it. I'll, I'll anchor this. Uh, I think it was, it was. I don't. I think it was. It wasn't a smart idea to play. I mean, uh, what the, what's the rule in the Champions League? I remember Milan and Inter once did clashing ties where they had to. Uh, yeah, they they uh, don't uh, use the yeah, same uh, stadium and the same match day. Exactly. I think it was uh, seventy two hours or something just for the field to get. I don't know to fix the field. But I I, I, I was kind of I was I was kind of shocked when I saw it. I'm like Roma's playing at home, but we just played there and. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to put too much emphasis on the in, those unfortunate injuries to Demiral and uh, and uh, Daniolo on the, the pitch, but I mean, it, it certainly played its part. But to say everything, to blame it mostly on, I guess, field maintenance, uh, they, those those types of injuries are unlucky. First and foremost, I mean, I've never had one. I don't wish it upon anyone anyone at all. But just the way Dem, just look at Demiral, the guy jumped. I don't want to say almost as high as Ronaldo, but he went pretty high. And the way he fell on his knee was... He's a big I boy. Think, mm-hmm. I think anyone who jumps that high and falls on their knee at, I guess, velocity and... I'm using scientific expressions I've never used in my life before. But just think <laughs> about it. Like, you jump that high and you fall on your knee at that... At, at, <clears throat> Going fast, I mean, it, something's going to happen. Any twist or nick the wrong way can mess up your knee. And Daniolo, uh, wasn't he trying to take on two or three guys at once and got to kind of got the that? whole team? Exactly. Yeah, but it, if you look at the video, it's it looks like it, it actually resulted I from a was, knock yeah. with uh, Delit. But um, yeah. you see him plant his left leg and he screams right away before there's any sort of contact. So again, it was just a the, a bad yeah. plant. Yeah, I, I have to say it's I have to say it's like ninety five percent the results of the actual plays and maybe five percent the field. I mean, I don't want to blow it out of proportion and say uh, it was just uh, Serie A's fault. I mean, it was a stupid decision, but I, I I wouldn't blame the injuries on on two match days, uh, two games played in the same match day in one stadium. That, that's yeah. my opinion. Either way, we do agree that it shouldn't you shouldn't have two matches. Yeah, exactly. On the same field. That's what we crazy. wanted to bring up. Yeah, you know what I mean. We're we're like I know like you've I know you guys have said it many times, and we all agree that like the city are dinosaurs and they don't understand how to market oh, the game and how to like <laughs> to to Very organize true. it properly. Like it's, it's it's only this year that they started playing games on TV at different times, which is a no brainer. <laughs> it's a no brainer. Why do you have the big teams playing each other at the same exact time? I'm a diehard Juve fan. I'm gonna watch Juve versus Verona over Lazio Roma just because I'm a, a homer and I want to watch Juve versus Verona. It, it makes no, so it's and that's only now in 2020. Like they, there's other leagues that figured this out 50 years ago when it was in black and white. So <laughs> so yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Just like when the Leafs won the cup last time. <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate, but it no, shouldn't happen wrong. anyways. It shouldn't happen regardless and it just it just goes to show how disorganized Italy is. It's exhibit uh, 7054 of why the Serie A is behind every other <laughs> league besides maybe the Dutch league. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there I, I don't get it. Like uh, once again, I'm I don't think like I don't think it's um, the field's fault that these guys got hurt. Nando brought up very good points there. Zaniolo, yeah. who knows, might have been trying to go. He's another guy we didn't mention in the diving. He's another kid that likes to throw himself everywhere. So uh, who knows if uh, just uh, bad luck happened? And uh, anyway, it's unfortunate, but I don't really think it's the field's fault. But said, yeah, you can't. How could you, I don't understand how the schedule makers like 
how they still have a job when that comes out. And they <laughs> zero that. sense. That and makes like, no sense. Like, oh my god, and, we we really fucked up. No, like like you just keep it there, and you have there's they don't announce the time of the games like sometimes three weeks before the game is set. They yeah, couldn't change something. Crazy. They couldn't. And then the guys are proving this too. Also, the guys are proving this. It's like yeah. where are they in this decision making? Is there I mean, even a person? That's yeah, we don't collecting we don't know. a pay and there's nobody there. There's just a rubbish I know. that anyone uses. I, I <laughs> heard you. I heard for a that, few years uh, they were playing. Oh, sorry, uh, Nick. I just want to say, for a few years they were playing Lazio Roma at uh, na- at uh, the afternoon games. They weren't uh, they weren't playing for Stich. Crazy! Uh, for, it's bananas. For Stich, <laughs> bro. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's really ridiculous. But, Why are we I, still fans? But I heard. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I heard yeah. about the pitch. The reason why the reason why they did it this weekend is because the last match day, uh, both teams are going to be on the road, and it gives organizers an extra week to prepare the stadium for the the Euros. Um, Those are details. Those are details. Uh, you know, it it, it kind of makes sense. But again, you could have had you could have had Roma play at home on the last match day. Put them put them on the Friday if you need to. You know, put them earliest as possible if you need to. Um, but or, yeah, I mean, uh, it, uh, or just allow them to build their own stadiums. Like, <laughs> oh, that, that too. Happen. That, that, that too. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's so, another point. Serie puts out a statement saying that UEFA told them that you can't have games in such a close proximity. Yet for their own league, they're okay with doing that. <laughs> yeah. no, they don't listen to outside. Like you're, you're you know publicly that. showing like the world that you're clearly like you're incompetent at the top levels. Like you don't know <laughs> what you're doing. Well, we can spend well, the whole time talking about how incompetent U- UEFA is overall. <laughs> but uh, um, I, um, I honestly, speaking about the whole national team thing, it's like, uh, first of all, I think that it's a stupid excuse because, like Nick said, you could just have one team play on a Monday or something, or like yeah. the day afterwards, just to just to save yourself some time. But moving from that, and speaking of the national team, I brought it up in our chat. Um, hopefully, you guys put some thought into it and brought up some good points. Um, I think throughout the entire qualifiers, I think Mancini employed like a nice four-man back system, which has been giving us success, right? But in 2016, we went pretty far with, I think Conte employed a 3-5-2 throughout the entire tournament, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, do you think when you go into an international tournament, do you continue with the same type of formation that got you through the qualifiers, or is the actual main tournament a different demon, which we know what it, it is, and do you try maybe changing things up? Do you go from like a more aggressive style, more defensive style? What do you guys think? Dom, you want to go first? Then you... Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think we should stay to a four-man back line. Um, I'm not sure where I read it, but someone made a fantastic point that a majority of teams now are playing attacking-style football. Um, having a three-man back line, you need to have a midfield and an attack that can hold a lot of possession. Uh, I think that our midfield is our right now our strongest aspect mm-hmm. of the team. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's quite as strong as the rest of Europe. So I don't believe that we're going to be able to outscore the rest of Europe, especially that a majority of countries have been playing attacking football for decades when only now we're slowly starting to transition into it. So I think having a three-man system is going to uh, leave us vulnerable and it's going to be a shootout and we're going to end up losing in the shootout. Um shootout as in they're going to be scoring a lot more goals than us um just look at the champions league champions league three men d do terribly look at conte right i saw it firsthand uh whenever you're against a team that attacks very well a three-man back line always struggles so i think we should stay at a four-man back line and uh, let our midfield do its work um <laughs> for me are yeah, you yeah, you want to go oh, oh, I'll, um go ahead. uh s- Look, man, I don't want, I'm not really buying the hype on the Italian national team. I've been spurned and hurt many times. <laughs> they had a pretty pretty easy group. It's a pretty easy qualifying road. Every time they faced a tougher team and a friendly, it didn't go too well. Now we got an easy group, so man, we should make it out of qualifying. I think it's going to be game-by-game game basis. Against the bigger teams, I totally agree with Dom. We don't have the talent to keep up with the France, the Germany, the Spain even even England, so uh, keep the four in the back. But in this group stage, I mean, we're playing some some smaller teams. I would try out the three, try and like, especially when goal differential matters in the first few games. If uh, if you can pound in a few goals, I would go for it. But as the tournament goes on, we got to be more cautious and play to our strengths. 
which isn't even defense anymore. But you know, it's <laughs> yeah. it's still it's we still got to play to that to that point. That's it. Um. I think I'm a bit more optimistic than these two for the national team. I don't know. It's, it's, it's the first time they brought me joy in a while. Um, just, to, just to go up on a few points. Uh, Jenny, you forget what system Ventura used to play, which was... Oh, game. God. Well, we don't, don't say that, that, that guy's name. We don't say that guy's name. I'm just giving you context. We, did, we played, yeah. I guess you can say we played well under Conte. That's, again, a perspective. But we also uh, kind of faltered with the, with the three-man backline with Ventura. But obviously, mm-hmm. there's more factors that fit into that. Um, I'm going to get to my formation in just a second. Dom, you said defense isn't... I mean, defend, I mean, France won a World Cup playing mostly defensive football. So, I mean, they, they, they shine. They turn me quite much to the leapy, right? So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with playing defense. I'm just I, I love defensive football. Um, my ideal formation, I think I'd go with a 4-3-1-2. Um, I keep the four-man back line, but I try to play... Uh, listen, uh, our most informed player right now is Chiro Immobile. Okay? We've got to find a way to somehow... Capitalize unleash- on him unleash this guy like he's scoring for fun this guy's 20 goals in like 18 games uh all his best seasons have played ha- in Serie A have been next to playing next to a creative player uh Lesio Cerci uh this year Joaquin Correa and Luis Alberto I mean I'm not Pellegrini's biggest fan but the guy's a very decent playmaker put him in the trequartista hole put Insigne or uh Chiesa that play Segunda Punta and next to Immobile and I think we have a winning formula. I, like Jan said, we played some pretty crummy teams in qualifying. Yeah, it's nice to go ten and zero, but which of these teams uh, had a realist? Which of these teams actually scares anyone? I mean, uh, the national team is a bit of a mystery right now. So, but I mean, if I was Mancini, it looks like he doesn't have a plan B. It's always four three three, but I think against teams like uh, France, Spain, and England, uh, we're going to struggle. That's uh, perfectly said, and. Um... You know, I, I want to go to our, our, our social media questions now. Um, we're so popular on social yeah. media. Uh, At the couch, guys, for anybody listening, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, Johnny, maybe this is more for you, but I want to know what the other guys think first. Uh, this is from <laughs> Roma Club uh, Philadelphia. Uh, with the loss of Zaniolo, do you think Petraki has to make a big move before the January, January window closes? I'll just give I'll just give my two cents uh, first. Um I feel like they can't rush into anything. They can't just go out and buy a player just because. Uh, I feel like you're going to overspend if, if you do that. But uh, I want to know what you guys think. Uh, you know what, Jan? You haven't gone first yet, so so you go first. Well, it's funny that you mentioned what Ro- Roma needs. Like, they need a guy to play maybe on their wing. That, like, you know, they don't have to offer much money because he was initially bought for a million dollars. So the Plus Valencia can be like, hey, give us 10 million. This guy <laughs> named Suso, that's a big fraud, but everyone seems to like him on all these stat sites. I don't know. I'd give him even 10 million at this point. Just give us 10 million. Ciao. Just take him. He's a Raiola agent, too. He's, he's, it's good. I think that would it be works. a perfect for Roma. It's low cost. He's on an expiring contract. So I don't know, maybe if they want to. I guess it doesn't work like kind of in hockey yeah, where you kind of like, they're going to have to resign up to something, but it's not going to cost them much. And then uh, hopefully they can ship them off to some Spanish uh, second division team next year. And uh, that's it. That's where, he, that's where he deserves to be. Cause that's even, yeah, I just never, I never rated that guy. And uh, ever since he's been at Milan, we never made the champions league. So he'll be right at home at Roma. So maybe perfect. <laughs> I love the Roma. I love it. Sando, what do you think uh, your rivals should do? Um, they should stay put. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, being objective, I mean, uh, any buy in January, I feel seems kind of panicked. Uh, uh, just my perspective mm-hmm. on it. But I heard rumors today that they want to buy Suzo, uh, which will not make their team any better. But I heard an interesting rumor about Politano. I mean, mm. he's not great, but he's not bad. I'd say he's a slightly above average player that could probably make a difference. Uh, Is Chingy... he still being used a lot? Uh, is that right? Not at all. No, not at all. But Conte apparently lo- wants him for some the... reason. He's not using him, but he wants to keep him. Strange. Conte Conte said. Said. I, I think there's a swap happening with Spinazzola yeah. going back to Roma yeah. and That's Politano going to Inter. Rumors. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah so. I think Spinazzola is starting right back for a while while, uh, while uh, Florenzi was riding the bench third string at one point. It's, uh, uh, it, it was, he was like, I, he was for a bit, but it was a short period of time. 
I, I don't blame Fonseca for be, for benching Florenzi. Has there, there ever been a more overhyped player in the last like five years? Hey, hey, hey. He scored that goal where he celebrated with his nana. That's a legendary moment. <laughs> do not touch Florenzi. It was a good celebration. I'll give him that much. But, yeah. Does he do anything oh. that's good? Uh, I mean, he put he put Ronaldo in his place recently, so I mean, I have to give him credit for that. But like, the I, against Barcelona too, no? Yeah, he's aggressive. He's uh, I I think what he has a likability. That's I I see what Nando's trying to say. Just Florenzi has a likability. He brings that excitement. He brings uh, that aggressiveness that you don't really see that much with right backs. So it's um, I think that's why the, the, he just has a likability to him. And plus, um, was he? I think this game against Juve, he was captain, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he's 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 the Roma guy right now. He's he's um, well, ever since that Rossi left, he's the third in line about uh, who is an actual Romanista on that team. So that's why he he just he just gets it by merit, I guess. Um, but in to answer the original question, uh, Nick. Uh, any type of move would be too desperate to get. I think your January moves should be, if you're a team that's in the top spot, maybe get a, a, a depth piece or two to help you out in the long haul for the league championship or for a Champions League run. Uh, and if you're like a team like Roma, who's on the cusp of just trying to stay in the competitive leagues in terms of like international competition, it's not a major need right now to replace Zaniolo. Yes, he's a very key piece and it's hard to lose him. But if you're going to go get somebody, try maybe try to go after like a free transfer to help you stay competitive for next year. When like it, when you guys play in the international competitions, you have a guy to play in the league games while you have your top flight team play in the actual international competition. So, no, I don't think Roma should go after anybody at this point. Dom, and yes or no, does... Um, yes, yes or no, does uh, Roma go after somebody? I don't think they should, but if they do, they should go after Marco Piazza. On Juve, he's running the bench. He's 24 years old. He's young. He'll cost 10 million dollars, and there's a little bit of upside. So he won't do what Zaniolo is going to do, but he has a future and potential to be a strong forward. But if if it's true that Spinazzola does go to Inter, Conte will turn that man into a absolute monster. I guarantee it. Because on Juve he was fantastic. On Roma he's been fantastic when he stays healthy. On Inter under Conte's system, he's going to thrive. That's for sure. Again, those are just rumors, though. So. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, Dom plays uh, agent. He plays scout, so he knows it all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but oh, joking aside, going to another question, obviously this is going to be dear and near to uh, Jan's heart. We got a question uh, concerning Milan. Um, do they qualify for Europa League being 10 points out of, I think, fourth? I think they're, what, six out of Six points away, I believe, or is it five points away from uh, five or from six, six from uh, sixth place? From sixth place, uh, yeah, we got a we got a question in for that. So uh, I'm going to direct it towards you, and if the other guys want to answer as well, uh, do, you know, do they make it? Uh, well, first glance, I would say no. Uh, historically, you can look it up from January to March. Milan has always been a hot team, even when they had Gattuso as a coach, when they had anyone they had, they always for some reason January to March they seem to turn it on. But looking at it realistically, no. I I see them finishing seventh, eighth. But you never know. Ibra is a type of character that can kind of change things. And teams that have been playing over their head, this is the time that they kind of start losing points. But I'm just trying to convince myself they might. But my honest answer is I don't don't think they will. Same here. Yeah. Nando, Nando, yes or no, do they make a Europa League? I know uh, I saw Nando, you, you did the thumbs down before. (laughs) <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna pull. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull a switch here. I'm just looking at the, the city at table. They have Torino and Parma and Cagliari ahead of them. None of these teams like wow exactly. me. I think so, Cagliari is on a four game losing streak too. Yeah, they're they're, they're gonna finish tenth, uh, ninth or tenth spot. But like, just quickly, I think Milan could qualify for seventh place. But honestly, it's to the, it's, uh, it's not worth it. I mean. Europa League Thursday nights playing against uh, I don't know uh, Celtic like Lazio and or Inter. Yeah, I mean, it's, but at least you can pronounce those names. That's it. It's in their, it's, in, it's within their best interest not to, but I guess to save face for the club, they should. I don't know. It's I really don't care what they do to be honest. But uh, <laughs> put a gun to my head, I think I think they do qualify. Dom, uh, I'll be optimistic. For you guys, I think Respect. they could. I think they could. 
Okay. Uh, Cagliari has been in form. Now, I didn't, I didn't even know they're on a four-game losing streak. Um, but the biggest problem with Milan is they don't score goals because mm-hmm. their defense is fine. If you look at their goals for, I'm pretty sure they're on par with the top six teams. But they have 18, I think, 18 or 17 goals for. That is terrible. I Disgusting. think they're fourth from the bottom for goals scored, which yeah, is unacceptable horrible. for them. So now bring in an Ibra. I think Ibra will score goals, right? I don't, I, if, if, if I tell you right now Ibra is going to score eight or ten goals in the next, how many games are left? We'll say 20 games. He Just should be. Italia. Right. He should be able to do it. So you could argue that if, 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 he, could, if he can bring him back to scoring a bit more, they could uh, get sixth place. But it's all at the end of the day, it's all about scoring. They're not scoring enough goals. Exactly. So, uh, uh, re- regarding some of the teams uh, ahead of them, I just want to ask all of you guys uh, quickly uh, before we go into our, our last question, which I know for sure Dom and, and Jan will like. But quickly, Caledonia is in sixth place right now, at twenty nine points, uh, and then Verona ninth place, twenty five points, but they have a game in hand. Uh, Caledonia and Verona, do they do they finish in the top ten or even fight for Europa League? Uh, for us this season, uh, you could choose. You know, you could say Cali to yes, Verona no. Just, just quickly, yes or no. Uh, let's start with uh, let's start with Dom. I think uh, Cagliari will finish on top of them. The fans are energized. They started off really strong. I think they'll do better. Yeah. I don't think either one of those teams finish in the top eight. Nando. I go with uh, Jan on that, uh, but I, I'll give a shot of hope to Cagliari. They got Nyangolan, they got Nandez, uh, they got a few nice players there. I mean, they could turn it around, but ultimately, uh, I got to go with Jan on this. Adri? Yeah, I agree. I think uh, Cagliari, Verona, they, these teams were hot uh, coming into the season. They were kind of like the Spau bit or what were Parma, I think, last year. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're good teams, but I don't think they're, you know, you know, great teams that can make it into Europe. Uh, they have been slipping, and it, and it's been showing. So I think uh, I think they don't uh, they don't crack uh, top ten either. Johnny, I don't think either make it. To be honest with you, I think uh, Cagliari is just going to keep on uh, uh, sliding out. And Verona, I don't think they're a good enough team to even get there. I, no. uh, you know what? I, I think Verona is going to finish higher than Cagliari, but neither team obviously in Europe. And our last question, this one's from Instagram from Giorgia Di Princio. Uh, I know you guys are going to like this one. It's it, it's written in Italian. Un uh, personaggio storico che vorresti avere a cena. Uh, a a uh, historic person that you like to have dinner with. Uh, you know, let's just widen it. Anybody in Calcio, anybody ever that you like to have cal- uh, a dinner with. Uh, I know Dom and, and Jan, you both work in the restaurant business, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know, I see Jan, you're thinking about that, so... Yeah, Jan's thinking hard, man. Uh, uh, first? Where I do you guys somewhere. work, though? Where do you guys work? Plug your plug your place. Where do you guys work? Oh, I don't work. I, I've retired from working in restaurants. Okay, I, you work you? You, yeah, you I used your, to work uh, at Bottega. I hung up my apron. I, I yeah, used to work at Bottega. <laughs> great, great pizzeria. But uh, my, he, my apron is hung up, and uh, it's done with. I would love to have supper with Paul Gascoigne. Honestly, wow. that, that, like that would be that would be a party. Like, uh, definitely a party, because... I mean, I would love to meet Badjo and you know Maldine, but these guys, these guys were never crazy enough for like that. Really want to go out for supper with them? I'm gonna fall asleep after half an hour. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> fuck us going. It's gonna be a, what's gonna happen? Is you gonna even like? It's, it would it would be really a riot. It would be a riot to have supper with that man. Dom. Yeah. So uh, I work. I do still work in the. I work in a kitchen. I work in a restaurant called uh, Ristorante Primo Segundo in Little Italy. There you uh, go. Come anytime. Um, get a carbonara get a carbonara yeah absolutely Uh, I know that Pirlo is a wine connoisseur so it'd be nice to tear his knowledge but I feel like that's kind of a boring cop out answer Uh, Eric Cantona I think would be my answer yeah I think it's also the same same, exactly the same kind of idea that Jan's thinking with Nando? Uh, Nando, can I can I have two dinners? One classy dinner and one party yeah. dinner. <laughs> yeah, sure. You, you get a my primo and you get a second. A second okay. Yeah. Uh, if you're paying, you can do whatever you want. I, I, for my primo, <laughs> I'd, I'd go a little more classy. I'd go with Pirlo, Nesta, Maldini, Baggio, and uh, for the second, uh, I would say let's uh, Gascoin is a good choice. Uh, Materazzi is another guy. That guy, that guy was that guy was a baller man. And uh, Sergio Ramos, believe it or not. Mm. Yeah. Legendary. Very interesting. Uh, how about uh, uh, Gianni? 
Yeah, so for myself, I'm going to go talking about crazy. I think uh, it almost doesn't get any crazier than Gennaro Gattuso. For me, I think uh, partying <laughs> with Gattuso is just another thing that, you know, you check off the bucket list. So uh, for me, Gattuso, you know, from the drinking to the eating, I know he's from the south, so they do that well down there. So uh, for me, definitely uh, Gattuso, you know, if you can wine him and dine him and, you know, we can have fun later too. So I think uh, Gattuso is a good shot. Johnny? Well, see, I, I, it's a it's a nice public radio, so I can't say do a line with Maradona for supper, but <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, when I was a kid, when I was like four or five years old, I switched from playing a forward position to a defensive position because I used to love watching Nesta, uh, even though I wasn't a, a fan of Lazio or Nesta, or AC Milan throughout the years. I just loved watching him play, and he's the reason why I started playing defense as a kid when I played soccer. So I would love to sit down and have a chat with him and just pick his brain as to like, like how does he work? Like how does he do the? Like how does he play the way he does and stuff? And just get to hear the stories and whatnot, and the about the brotherhood of like the Italians playing soccer together and stuff. So for me, uh, Nesta would probably be my uh, dream supper partner. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I, I'd have to take. Um... Either Gigi Buffon, just because I feel like he's the type of guy you sit down with and he's going to tell you stories until tomorrow. Yeah. Um, he, he seems like that guy, and I'm sure he has a lot of stories to tell. Or or uh, someone like Toto Scalacci, just because he, he's a Sicilian uh, footballer, le- uh, led uh, the World Cup in scoring in 1990. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm half Sicilian, so it would be inter- interesting to sit down uh, with him. And unfortunately, that uh, that's going to be it for, for us today. I, I feel like we could have uh, a million more questions to talk about. Um, Coppa Italia, Coppa Italia, Coppa Italia round of 16 starts tomorrow. Actually, we'll get one last question in. Um, obviously, all your guys, all your teams are, are still in the Coppa Italia. And, uh, you know, just in general, who, who do you think is going to win uh, the Coppa Italia come, uh, come May? Dom? Well, I'm obviously I'm gonna say Juve. Yeah, you're gonna say Juve. We're always <laughs> trying to go for the doppietto, doppietto right? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that's the Nando? idea, right? Anything else uh, is a failure. So I'd love to see Lazio. We've been specialists oh. in that tournament the last. I see that for the decade we have a lot of finals and a few wins. But I think we're gonna pull a full Napoli and punt every competition. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, and we're just gonna lose. Actually, I think we're gonna lose to Napoli the next round. So I'm gonna think. I think Napoli is gonna win it. Uh, I'd like uh, I'd like Milan to win it, uh, but uh, also Napoli should if if they want to salvage anything for the season, it'd be nice if they win this, even for Gennaro Gattuso to win uh, something. But uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll go for Napoli or Milan to win the Coppa Italia. Gianni? Milan's po- Milan's probably going to be playing actually Begovic, a Canadian uh, refugee, a kid from oh, Serbia that uh, learned how to play soccer over here, and uh, they got him on loan. So that go is Canada. True. Yeah, Gianni. I don't know, honestly speaking, because I want either one of my teams to do it, but I don't think Napoli's got the capability to do so. And maybe Roma might actually just push for it. But uh, see, I I said it at the beginning of the year, and I'll still hold on to my prediction. I think Inter still takes it. I think Inter in some way tries to push for a, a doppietta at least, you know. But uh, um, I'm still, like I said at the beginning of the year, and I'll stick to my guns. I say Inter. Yeah. And- and last year, Adri? I, I, I mean, as much as that might pain me to say, you know, the snakes over there at Inter, but uh, I, as I mean, if any for them, realistically, I think uh, if you know the the league doesn't you know come come to them, I think you know a Coppa Italia, something in the trophy cabinet can do good for them for Conte year one uh, over there. Uh, but my heart definitely says Milan. I, I'll even take Napoli too. I, th- I think, uh, as Jan said, to salvage salvage the season, which we all know they've been, you know, uh, stinking this year. I think uh, it could be good for them as well. You know, Gattuso, uh, you know, getting a, a, another trophy, and I think, uh, you know, keeping uh, De Laurentiis at bay as well. I think uh, we'll do good uh, over there in Naples. And my prediction is Atalanta, and that's just based off. Uh, the bracket. I, I think Atalanta is going to win uh, against Juventus in the final, and that will wow. do it for us. That will do it for us here. Um, thanks a lot, guys. I, I really appreciate. Yeah, it. Thank it was you fun. so much, fun. guys. Thank fun. you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. It, it, pleasure. it didn't get as heated as I expected it to be, but uh, you you all behaved. You're all uh, open minded. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need some wine, and it's the you were drinking the shy. wine. Though. They were yeah, shy. You know, Dom, yeah, Dom was chugging yeah. over there. I think. Now, yeah, I, 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 you guys made it. I had a long I think, day at work. 
I think if we don't do it over Skype and we do it in person, it'll get a bit more heated. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next time. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for uh, for listening to this week's episode of The Culture Guys. And definitely follow us, as I said, every, I say every week uh, on our social media platforms at The Culture Guys on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Catch us podcast on Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, uh, you know, all the great podcasting platforms. And uh, we're, you know, entertain you know be with us on this journey and uh we you know be back uh, every week thanks for listening Ciao. Ciao. Bye. The Cultural Guys is a weekly podcast by Adriano Donardo, Gianni Delacoli, and myself, Nicholas Di Giovanni. We want to bring cultural back to its roots in our communities and share stories from around the world about why we're passionate about the beautiful game. You can listen to us anywhere where you listen to your podcasts, including Spreaker, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Mixcloud. Give us your opinion on social media at The Cultural Guys on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The outro song is The Last Ones by Jazar. Thank you.